Good evening and welcome sci-fi movie nerds. This is another episode of the Sci-Fi Movie Guy and my name is Mike. So this is weekly show number six. So thanks for tuning in. And as always, we're going to start with Star Wars news. So the first thing on my news radar is directors Phil Lord and Christopher Miller have been tapped to direct the new Star Wars standalone film, A Han Solo Story. Now we're not sure what the exact name is going to be, but it's the new Han Solo movie. And this is really exciting news because these two guys together make magic. And I really think that we're going to have a well played out and well thought out movie. These guys know how to edit movies, they know action, they know adventure. And also in news this week, Alden Ironreich has been tapped to play Han Solo. So we kind of already knew this going in, but Disney, you know, they wait and they wait and they wait and they finally announced it. And this, it sounds like he beat out over 2,500 other actors that tried out for this role. Um, some of the names of the people that he built out or that he beat out are Ansel Elgort, uh, Miles Teller, Dave Franco, um, and the finalists that he beat out was Taron Egerton and Jack Rayner to win this role. So there was a lot of young actors that really wanted to play Han Solo and I mean why wouldn't you if you look at what the character did for Harrison Ford's career I mean he just took a hold of this role and it propelled him onto so many other things now I feel the risk with this is Alden Ironreich could destroy his career too if he doesn't do a good job of Han Solo now I'm not saying that I want him to imitate Harrison Ford and have the Harrison Ford mannerisms, but I want him to have the swagger of Han Solo. It's just like when Christopher Pine took over for Captain Kirk. He didn't do an imitation of William Shatner with the I do not know about the green chick. So you know what? Chris Pine didn't do that. He took his own character, but he had the swagger of Captain Kirk. And he didn't try to imitate William Shatner. And I really hope Alden Ehrenreich doesn't try to imitate Harrison Ford. I hope that he does his own version. But I want the swagger of Han Solo. I want some of the grizzliness of Han Solo. Now, obviously, he's a much younger Han Solo. So we don't want him to be, you know, like Han Solo was in The Force Awakens. But I want him to have the same characteristics as Han Solo. So let's hope he does a great job. He's a great actor. Um, some of the movies that he has done weren't the greatest lately but he has always stood out as an incredible actor in these movies so i think that's a sign of a really good actor and a really good choice by disney to pick him for this movie so next on star wars news we have pablo hidalgo has confirmed on twitter this week in three different tweets that supreme leader snoke is not darth plagueis he has put an end to this rumor so as we know from Revenge of the Sith, the third movie in the prequels, Palpatine says that he killed Darth Plagueis in his sleep and that Darth Plagueis was able to stop the people he loved from dying, but he was never ever able to stop himself from dying. And Pablo Hidalgo, he confirmed to this on Twitter that no, he never had that power to stop himself from dying. He is dead. He was killed. There is no more Darth Plagueis, and Supreme Leader Snoke is not Darth Plagueis. So you can end these rumors. I know Star Wars has, you know, tried to fool us in the past, but Pablo Hidalgo has been pretty dead on serious when he debunks these myths. And I think the reason he debunked it is because he just wants people to go and enjoy this movie. So now... That doesn't mean that we're not still going to talk. Like, I think they like the fact that we're all still talking about who's Ray's parents. Um, I still think it's Luke Skywalker is the father. Um, but again, there's that rumor out there that Ray is a reincarnation of Anakin Skywalker and another Force baby. So that's possible. We don't know. Uh, but I like these things. These, these keep me entertained in between the year that we have to wait for each movie. So... Again, Supreme Leader Snoke is not Darth Plagueis. So now I have a bit of a spoiler. I don't usually put spoilers in my weekly show um, unless I warn you. So 
big spoiler alert for the next minute or so. I'm going to be talking about uh, a spoiler from Captain America Civil War that has to do with Star Wars. So when you see me do this again, that means the spoiler's over. So in Captain America Civil War this week, Spider-Man pays homage to Star Wars in one of his scenes where he's telling all the Avengers guys, hey guys, do you remember that movie? It's a really old movie. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back, and it's referring to they're trying to get down this Ant-Man who is just giant. He's giantized himself, so Ant-Man has become huge instead of small. And he's talking about where in The Empire Strikes Back on Hoth, they went around the AT-ATs with the harpoon cables um, and knocked them down by taking their legs out. Well, Spider-Man just says, hey, do you guys remember that movie Empire Strikes Back? It's a really old movie, and it's showing how young Peter Parker is. And all the other guys, they know exactly what he's talking about, and they all go into action to make it happen. So I, I thought that was really cool the way that uh, Disney, who runs Marvel Universe and also runs Star Wars, kind of threw that in as a shout-out to all the Star Wars fans. And uh, really good on them. I, I smiled, the whole theater smiled when they heard it. Um, and if you haven't seen Captain America Civil War, I'm really sorry about that spoiler, but again, I did warn you, so spoiler over, you can come back now, uh, no more spoilers, um, and let's talk about some more Star Wars news. So Mark Hamill confirmed that the opening sequence of Star Wars The Force Awakens was actually filmed as a hand with Anakin's, or Luke's lightsaber, which used to be Anakin's lightsaber, floating through space on Jakku and it was going to land on Jakku with the hand and then Maz Kanata was going to come and pick it up and take it away and then you go forward how many years into the future to where the Force Awakens starts. It was confirmed that this was originally how they were going to open the movie. I am so glad they didn't do this. I think it would have been stupid. There's so many people on the internet talking about why it would be stupid um, first of all, the hand fell in the Empire Strikes Back through the Cloud City and probably would have fallen through Bespin and Bespin's atmosphere. So the hand would have burnt up and it's just way too hard to explain it. So I'm really glad that J.J. Abrams did not put this in The Force Awakens. I think that some of the other edits that he did, not so good because I really wanted to see the Maz Kanata scene underneath the bar where she uses the Force. But... Right now, she it may or may not be a Force user because there's no canon saying that she is a Force user. But yeah, I'm really glad that they made this change with the hand and the lightsaber. Good on you guys. So our last story on Star Wars, or Star Wars news this week is Collider Video and Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, from Jedi Council did an interview with Claudia Gray. She's the writer of the new book, Star Wars book Bloodlines, as well as the a little bit older book Lost Stars. And to me, she's the best writer of the new Star Wars canon books. And he did an interview, which is up on Collider Video, so you can go there and watch it. And it's a great interview. Um, I've never been so enthralled to listen to a writer talk about some of the ways she wrote the book, some of the things she put in it. And as I reported last week, uh, Christian Harloff got a planet named after him in the book Bloodlines, Harloff Minor, which is a huge kudos to him and his family. I mean, every Star Wars boy's dream is to have something named after them in Star Wars canon. Um, so go to Collider Video and watch this interview. It was really, really good interview. So now we're going to get into sci-fi movie news, and we have a lot to cover this week. I'm going to start off by saying that I did go see Captain America Civil War for a second time on Sunday. I saw it opening night Thursday. I saw it on Sunday, and I'm going to do a full spoiler review. It should be up on my channel. Today is Monday, so I'm guessing uh, this show will be up on Tuesday, and that show will be up on Wednesday. So go watch it if you want to hear my comments. I've already put up my non-spoiler review. Um, I'm going to do the spoiler review, like I said, and it'll be up on Wednesday. Great movie. Just a great all-around movie. I gave it an 8.5, almost a 9, but 8.5 on my non-spoiler review. 
I've actually changed my mind and if you want to find out what I'm giving it now you got to watch my spoiler review so that's all I'm gonna say about Captain America Civil War for right now because I'm sure a lot of you haven't seen it yet so I might talk about it next week on the show or I might just cover it in my two reviews that I've done now the next piece of news is the next Wolverine movie is going to be rated R yes we're having one more final Wolverine movie it's Wolverine 4 and Hugh Jackman is back for it and it's going to be rated R so I think what they're trying to do is take some of the success that Deadpool had being a rated R movie but take the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the X-Men that Wolverine is so beloved he's the most beloved X-Men of all the X-Men everybody knows who Wolverine is and I don't know if this is such a good move for Wolverine. Now I know he's the most badass of all the X-Men and yes as a movie fan I'm going to love it but I've always said superhero movies should be for kids as well and I don't have any kids of my own but I just I remember when I was a kid and I wanted to go to these superhero movies I know I would have been very pissed off if my parents told me oh I'm sorry it's restricted you can't go and you got to wait till you're older now as a movie fan that's how I feel as an adult I'm gonna go watch this movie I'm probably gonna love it I love the Wolverine character I love Hugh Jackman as an actor so personally I'm okay with it as a movie fan eh, I wish that they wouldn't do this um, the next piece of movie news is and I'm very excited about this everybody knows I'm a DC guy more than a Marvel guy and Ben Affleck has been named executive producer for the Justice League movie coming out November 17th 2017 this is fantastic news I told you I liked Batman v Superman but it had issues and Zack Snyder I believe is the problem he doesn't know how to get a film edited properly and Ben Affleck being the executive producer they're saying that he's on board to assist Zack Snyder but I think he's on board to oversee Zack Snyder and make sure that the Justice League movie is way better than Batman v Superman was so this is very good news Ben Affleck is an amazing producer he's an amazing director he's an amazing actor he has won Academy Awards for his movies Argo Goodwill Hunting so these are things that he knows and he knows Batman he played Batman and he did a great job of it I think Ben Affleck was the best part of Batman v Superman his Bruce Wayne his Batman they were all great he had a lot of creative control on where the character went in Batman v Superman and now he's gonna have a lot of creative control in this new Justice League movie I truly do believe that he's gonna be a very hands-on producer which again good thing so I'm much more excited about the Justice League now I'm much more excited about the Batman the new Batman movie because it has also been confirmed that Ben Affleck and Jeff Johns have complete creative control over the new standalone Batman movie they are going to be uh, both appearing in the new film and what I'm oh no sorry just Ben Affleck is gonna be in the new film but the all they're also rumored that they're gonna bring back a lot of villains for this next one we all know at least I know I, sh I shouldn't say we all know but DC does villains way better than Marvel does but Marvel does superhero movies way better than DC does with maybe the exception of the Dark Knight which is still my favorite superhero movie but the fact that they're talking about bringing back so many villains in this new Batman standalone movie excites me we've got a possibility of Jared Leto as the Joker um, we've got a possibility of Harley Quinn played by Margot Robbie uh, maybe we're gonna see the Penguin maybe we're gonna see Catwoman who knows but I love the fact that they're not just gonna do one villain because in a standalone Batman movie he could easily be juggling two, juggling two or three villains and we all know Ben Affleck did a great I, I shouldn't say we all know but I think Ben Affleck did a great job as Batman I think the Batman standalone movie is gonna be phenomenal and so really exciting news coming out of DC right now now Sony Pictures 
has released the first trailer and this just dropped um, as I was preparing the show so I haven't even had a chance to watch this trailer but they've released the first trailer for director Ron Howard's Dan Brown adaptation Inferno so this is the next movie in the Robert Langdon movies so we had Da Vinci Code we had Angels and Demons and now we're gonna have Inferno so I haven't read the book I haven't seen the trailer but I love the first two movies so I'm really excited this is coming out and I know this isn't so much science fiction but it kinda is and I'm a real fan of these movies I'm a real fan of Dan Brown and I'm a fan of Tom Hanks now the other news that dropped about this is Felicity Jones has been tapped to play Tom Hanks' co-star which is very cool Felicity Jones is an amazing actress so all in all I'm gonna be watching the trailer a little bit later and I will talk about the trailer on next week's show but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that if you haven't seen it yet go to YouTube watch the Inferno trailer the next movie in the Dan Brown series so now we're talking a little bit more about Captain America Civil War but it's about a standalone film finally featuring Black Widow aka Natasha Romanoff played by Scarlett Johansson now she has been featured in so many of the Marvel movies she was in let's list these all off she was in Iron Man 2 the Avengers Winter Soldier Age of Ultron and now Civil War and it's about time she gets her own movie she her character is one of my favorites in the Avengers I love the way the character has developed over time I love the actress and you know let's be honest she's gorgeous so this is gonna be a huge hit at the box office and I'm gonna be there opening night to see it for sure I talked about some of the other characters in my non-spoiler review at a little bit more length than I did her character but she'll be prominently featured in my spoiler review uh, because she did a great job in the movie that's all I'm gonna say though and now we go this past week we found out that Jon Favreau is interested in teaming up with Robert Downey Jr. to do Iron Man 4 now I never thought this movie would happen because I thought Robert Downey Jr. was pretty much done doing Iron Man movies but the news is is that he's interested in doing one more so let's talk about this John Favreau he did the Jungle Book he's an amazing director and he you know he starred in uh, the Iron Man movie as well as Tony Stark's bodyguard but we get Tony Stark and John Favreau Favreau sorry Robert Downey Jr. together again Iron Man 4 this would be brilliant and you know what I would love to see an end to Iron Man now I'm not saying that it, uh, he has to die I'm just saying that it would be a great way to finish out maybe he retires maybe he passes on the Iron Man suit to a younger person I don't know but I'd like to see them wrap it up in that movie so maybe they'll release it after the two Avengers movies coming out uh, Age of Ultron no sorry not Age of Ultron um, the Infinity Wars so maybe they'll do the two Infinity Wars movies and then Iron Man 4 which would be a perfect wrap-up to Tony Stark maybe he retires maybe he trains someone new who knows but whatever this movie is I'm gonna go see it just like I go see all of these movies and that is the end of sci-fi movie news so the final thing I want to do is I didn't do it for the last couple weeks because I've been so busy with news stories but I want to talk about an old movie so the movie I want to talk about is The Secret of Nim now this is a movie for all ages it's mostly for kids but it's very near and dear to my heart because when I was in grade four which I'm not going to tell you how old I was but this is a long time ago I read in grade four Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, which this movie, The Secret of Nim, is an adaptation of that book. And the movie is not as good as the book. It's a children's book, but the book has so much more detail in it. But this movie is pretty darn good. So if you get a chance, get The Secret of Nim, watch it. Again, it's near and dear to my heart as a child. 
So I'd love for you to just take a peek at it if you haven't already seen it. Or if you have seen it, just watch it again because it's a really great movie. And kids of all ages can watch it so you can get your kids around the TV. Show them one of your old movies and they're going to look at it and go, Oh, Dad, this is so corny and the animation isn't as good as it is now. But it's just a great afternoon on a Saturday to sit down and watch an old movie. So thanks again for watching. I'm the Sci-Fi Movie Guy. My name is Mike. If you want, you can email me. I'm at Movie Guy Sci-Fi. Sorry, that's my Twitter handle, at Movie Guy Sci-Fi. Or you can email me at sci underscore fi underscore movie guy at yahoo.ca. I will answer all emails. If I get any emails and there's a question in it, I'll answer them on my next weekly show. And until next time, just remember, nerds rule the world.